I'm Alex Nizek, and this is finally the review of the Tesla Cybertruck. Now, it might seem like we're a little late to the party, but that's because we waited in line to buy this truck just like everybody else. If you're even casually interested in cars, you might have seen that the internet is really divisive on this car. There are people who are either blindly adamant that this is the best vehicle ever or fiercely opposed to it and that it's the worst vehicle ever, and there's really no middle ground. But in the true CR way, we're here to provide that. We're gonna talk about the positives of this truck and also the negatives. But first, here's what we bought. This is a Cybertruck all-wheel drive Foundation Series. Now, all of these trucks right now are called the Foundation Series. It's some of the first ones coming off the line. And we got the dual motor version. So there's a motor at the front and the rear. You can also get a three motor version with more power. It has 600 horsepower and roughly a 123 kilowatt hour battery. It weighs about 6,600 pounds, which is heavy for a vehicle, but not as bad as you might expect just looking at this thing. We got the all season tires, gray interior, and according to the EPA, it's rated for 340 miles of range, which interestingly was not on the window sticker. And with a $1,995 destination fee, the grand total for our Cybertruck came to $101,985. Regardless of how great this truck may or may not be, there is one really important thing you need to know. One does not simply just drive a Cybertruck casually. You are going to be the center of attention no matter where you go and also while you're going there. Before driving the Cybertruck, honestly, I was braced for a lot of negativity. I just got done driving the Cybertruck for the first time this weekend and consider some of these reactions that I got. Peace signs, thumbs up, pointing, laughs, pictures and judgmental stares, passing by a car wash at the high school and the kids screaming, oh my God, please wash your car here. And in West Hartford, I got a straight thumbs down boo Cybertruck as we drove by. And my favorite of them all that I was asked if it even has seats inside, but I was pleasantly surprised. I had conversations with people in my town that I might've never otherwise talked to. And I actually really enjoyed it. But if you're not into that type of thing, just be aware. Putting all of that aside, this is one of the most interesting trucks from an engineering perspective. So we wanted to hear from you and we threw up this post on our YouTube community page and here are some of the most common questions we got asked. First, steer by wire. This is the first car available in the US with a system like this. And what makes it truly unique is there is no physical connection between the steering wheel here in front of me and the wheels down at the road. Essentially how it works, there are sensors here in the steering column, and then you have two big actuators down at the wheels that do the actual steering. So it's all communication via software. And it sounds kind of scary, but Tesla says that there is triple redundancy here, which you can kind of think of it like how a jet airplane can still fly if it only has one of the two engines working. Now, there is a lot to get used to here because what it translates to from the driving perspective is the steering wheel only turns about 180 degrees. So the steering responds really, really quickly. And then you add in the fact that it also has rear steer and the whole thing feels a little bit strange at first. There are a few cars where you have to get used to the steering. Most cars steer the same. Some of my colleagues here thought that it was so different and it had such a high learning curve that they felt like they were learning how to drive all over again. And if it's your first EV, you're getting used to everything that comes along with owning an EV. And if it's your first Tesla, you're also getting used to all of the controls and everything that's unique there. And we'll get into that later. So there are a few cars that, you know, require a bigger learning curve than this one. Next, we got asked a lot about visibility and few cars, at least that I can think of, have ever been so form over function. Now, during the product development cycle, usually engineers and designers, they're duking it out and they come to some middle ground, but that's really not the case here. This car is so design forward and this honestly ridiculous triangle shape, mainly the roof, has huge implications on visibility. The view directly forward is actually pretty good. The windshield is absolutely massive, so the forward visibility is good. Uh, the front of nose of the truck is really low, so I feel like I have a really good vantage point of the road. Now the problem is I don't know where the front end of the truck is, so it can be a little difficult pulling up to things, and Oddly, the truck doesn't seem to have parking sensors front or rear, so you don't get any warnings. You just get the camera views on the centered screen. And the other really obvious thing here are these A pillars, these roof pillars. And you know, these are kind of your regular A pillars here. And then we have what I'm gonna call the A plus pillars that go all the way out to the front of the truck. And 
it looks really strange from in here, but it does kind of cause a lot of issues, especially at intersections. I had multiple times where cars kind of got hidden behind those pillars as you're trying to turn. And so it can be a little weird to get used to that. And the other really strange thing up front, and for some reason, probably my favorite part about this whole truck is the giant single windshield wiper. And it rained while I had the truck. I was lucky enough to get to use it, but it's really weird because it is parked in the vertical position alongside the left of the windshield. But then when you're using it and it's raining, it actually lands fully horizontal across the windshield. So it creates this bar across the bottom and it helps prevent the water from rushing up onto the windshield. But the second it goes back up into that home position, all the water starts running up the windshield. So not great, uh, kind of alarming when it's working because it's so massive, but uh, pretty interesting aspect out the front side windows and the rear side windows, despite the whole triangle shape, side visibility is actually pretty good. And the rear view mirrors on the sides, they work pretty well. Everything gets really challenging as you go towards the back. Uh, right now, the tonneau cover is closed, which means it completely blocks the rear window. And what they've done in place of that to kind of, again, make up for this design forward approach is give you a view here on the center screen. It's a camera feed from the rear. It's small, it's not where I'm used to looking, and what I really dislike after driving this a bunch is when I put on the turn signal, my rear view camera goes away, and it's replaced by a blind spot camera, which in and of itself is fine, but there's a lot of times where I still want to see what's behind me, so that gets a little annoying. If I do open the tonneau cover, which it's opening now, once it's fully open, it does reveal a small window, um, but it's really, really short pretty narrow and I have this microscopic rear view mirror up here and it's pretty much just pointed at the road behind me. So I think most of the time you're gonna be using the camera system here because Tesla actually recommends keeping that tonneau cover closed so that you get more range. Uh, so no doubt the design of this truck, it really impacts visibility. It's one of the most obvious downsides of the futuristic look of this thing. You also wanted to know all about the build quality, and it's a bit twofold in this situation. Now, this car is undoubtedly imperfect, especially on the outside. And I would not argue with you if you said that was unacceptable for $100,000. But I also want you to consider that Tesla built something that's really unique and also really challenging. There's a reason cars don't tend to have really flat panels and straight lines that go the length of the entire car, because it's really hard to hide stuff. Cars tend to have curved panels and lines that meet up in different ways so that you can hide imperfections that frankly all new cars have. So it's hard to say that if another manufacturer made this car that they wouldn't also have the same challenges. Compared to other Cybertrucks I've seen on the internet, ours actually seems pretty good. First of all, the sharp edges you've heard so much about, those are absolutely a real thing, especially here on the front corners and there's some more on the tailgate. All of these panels have a pretty sharp edge, which is unusual for a car, but You'll notice the gaps here where the frunk meets the fender. This is pretty straight. I do notice that the A-pillar trim here is kind of proud of the rest of the fender, so you can feel that that's not quite flush. But as you come around the truck, one of the easiest places to notice some panel misalignment can usually be the doors, but our doors actually fit pretty well. The gaps look even, uh, and it can be tricky sometimes to line up the rear door with the front door, but again, the gap looks even top to bottom and they sit at about the same level away from the rest of the car. So honestly, not so bad. Going back to the flat panel thing, if you look down the side of the truck, you'll actually see some waviness and what almost looks like dents. And this appears to be because of the way they've fastened these panels, they're welded and bonded with glue. And because they're so flat, you see all of it. And also when you look down the edge of the truck, this line that goes all the way from the corner of the bed all the way up to the peak of the roof, you can kind of see a little bit of waviness if you look carefully. And this is a good point to talk about the so-called exoskeleton that you might have heard of. And it has it, but it might not be what you're thinking. This truck still has a structure underneath the body panels, which honestly itself is a marvel of cast aluminum technology. But behind all of these flat stainless panels are stamped, welded, and bonded steel structure that gives these panels the strength they need and also allows them to attach to that cast structure underneath. So compared to a normal car, yes, it is carrying a little bit more of the load on these body panels, but it still has the bones or the skeleton underneath. 
talk about truck stuff. And first is towing. It's rated to tow 11,000 pounds, which is competitive actually with other electric pickup trucks like the Ford Lightning and the Rivian R1T. And we haven't towed with it yet, but like those other trucks, we'll hook up a, a load, a trailer, and we'll see how it impacts the range. And like any other pickup truck, the Cybertruck does have a bed in the back. So you flip this down and you have a six foot truck bed. It is a little bit narrow at the base uh, compared to some other trucks, but you have some other things you might be expecting like tie down points and anchors along the side that you can adjust and it has really nice lighting. Um, and I think, you know, one of the other details here is you do have a storage bin underneath the floor. You also get some power points here in the bed, such as your 240 outlet and a couple of 110s as well. You'll also notice that just because of the design of this thing, the sides of the bed are really, really tall. So that can make it a little inconvenient if you're trying to reach things and place things in from the side. But to be honest, full-size pickup trucks like the F-150 and others, they're already so tall that if that's really important to you, you might want to step down to something smaller. And it has its benefits too, because there's this built-in tonneau cover. And just this past weekend, I used this to move some furniture, which fit in the bed. And then I was able to close the cover over top of it and it kept it dry. It also sounds super satisfying when it closes. As far as other storage on the Cybertruck, like other Teslas, it does have a frunk and there's a button down here and there you go. It might not be as big as you're expecting based on the size of the rest of the vehicle, but there it is. And lastly, you wanted to know about cleaning this thing. And to be honest, when you go into the owner's manual, there are a ton of instructions on how to handle it. And they do say though, that you should get any bugs and bird droppings and tar off the truck immediately because it could start discoloring the stainless steel panels. So be aware of that. And also we had a lot of trouble cleaning the windshield. It actually took a lot of time because the dashboard is super long. It's hard to reach down in there. And it's also just a lot of glass. So it's not the most straightforward vehicle to keep clean, but at the end of the day, you can wash this like a regular car. And that's exactly what we did. And as you'll notice, there's a lot of fingerprints all over the stainless steel as well. And even though we washed it, those fingerprints are pretty much still there. So you'll have to go around and spot clean them. And if you want this to look factory fresh all the time, it's probably gonna be a lot of work. We're gonna take this Cybertruck out onto our track and see what it's like to drive. But before that, I have to get into it, which is a thing. You'll notice there are no door handles here. So you actually press this button with this tiny little LED square on it and you press that and then you either grab the weather stripping, don't grab the window or the side of the metal panel here and you pull it open. And honestly, the doors are pretty heavy. Uh, they can be a little difficult to open. Now the air suspension that the truck has, it lowers it. So the step in height is actually not too bad and the seat is at a pretty good height. So once you get the door open, it's not too bad from there. Now that we're inside the Cybertruck, it's actually pretty familiar to other Tesla models if you've ever been in one. It's really minimalistic in here, and other than the single center display and the steering wheel, you really don't have a whole lot going on. But despite that, fit and finish wise, it's probably one of the better Teslas I've been in. All of the panels seem to fit together pretty well, the materials look good, and yeah, there are some hard plastics and whatnot around, and it might not be exactly what you're expecting for 100 grand, and it's not really where all the money that you're paying is going to, but it is one of the nicer and better executed Tesla interiors that I've experienced. The driving position in here is pretty good. It's actually quite spacious. Uh, there's enough width here, the way the center console is designed, my right knee isn't you know, intruding on the space or anything like that. Armrests are pretty comfortable, well positioned. I think the weirdest thing about it is just how long the dashboard is and how far away the base of the windshield is. It just feels strange. And the other thing here is the steering wheel shape. It, it's a yoke, it's not round, but considering the steer by wire and the fact that I'd never have to really turn it all that far, at least in my couple days with the truck, I got used to it and I didn't mind it. The seats in general are pretty comfortable. Now, different people of course will fit differently in a seat, so you should always try it out for yourself, but so far these seats offer pretty good leg support they have good side bolstering to kind of hold you in place, four-way lumbar adjustment, which is great. And, you know, Tesla tends to have pretty comfortable seats in their cars, and that seems to have carried over to the Cybertruck as well. When it comes to the controls, nearly everything is controlled through this center screen, even down to shifting gears. There's a little slider on the side of the screen to push it forward for drive or slide it back for reverse. 
And look, it while it's not completely unique to the Cybertruck, it is complicated and there's a lot of kind of clutter and things to learn. You can get used to it, but it, it does take a while to get up to speed with this system. And it's missing some other things you might be used to too, like turn signal stalks. Turn signals are here on the steering wheel. It's another thing, it is not ideal, let's admit that, but you can get used to it. And the turn signals in particular, you press the button here, it activates, and then when the truck senses that you've either completed the turn or you've merged to the next lane, it'll auto shut off. And you know, generally 90% of the time, I'd say it works pretty well. In terms of advanced safety systems in this truck, honestly, it doesn't do things that almost every other Tesla does. So we bought it and it is supposed to have autopilot as Tesla calls it. So lane centering and the ability to not drive itself, but automatically follow the lane. And it doesn't have it. They say it's coming in a future software update, but so far all it has is ACC or adaptive cruise control. And the blind spot warning system is kind of subpar too. It's just like the recently refreshed Tesla Model 3 that we tested. And you get the camera view in the center screen. And instead of a light out on the mirror, like you get in virtually every other car, you have a tiny, super dim, easily missed red light that shows up kind of behind this speaker grill. Super easy to miss. And it's really not the best implementation. Aside from the steering, driving the Cybertruck is kind of like driving any other Tesla or a lot of other electric cars for that matter. The powertrain is super smooth. It's of course not shifting any gears, so it's just easy to take off. And that 600 horsepower, you can definitely feel it. It accelerates quickly. And the regen braking system is really smooth to use, especially once you kind of get used to it and you've been driving the car for a while. But just like other Tesla models, you can't shut it off. So you can't have this vehicle coast like a regular gas car, for instance. What we call one pedal driving is always on. And that means once you start to lift off the accelerator pedal, it'll start to slow the vehicle down. So just be aware of that and that there is no option to shut it off. One thing I was kind of surprised about is after driving about 250 miles, I saw about 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour in terms of the efficiency of this truck. And that's, it's better than I expected given the shape of it and seemingly lack of aerodynamic efficiency and the giant wheels and tires. And we will eventually do our own range testing on this truck to see how accurate or how close to that 340 miles we get when we do our 70 mile per hour highway range test. Eventually you're gonna have to charge this truck. And of course, like all Teslas, it's compatible with their Tesla supercharging network. And that's great. But I charged it a few times over the weekend and I did find that it's a little annoying to back it up to the charger. First of all, the thing is giant, as we've talked about, and it lacks some of those visibility aids like parking sensors and whatnot. So you're really relying heavily on the camera to inch as close as you can to the charging pedestal because, you know, the cable on these Tesla chargers is pretty short and the charging port is kind of far up on the side of the car. So you really have to get it basically as close as you can so you can plug it in. And that, you know, when you're trying to navigate your $100,000 truck and there's a lot of people around watching you, it's a little unnerving. So that's our review of the Tesla Cybertruck. Now, look, the design of this thing does feel like a novelty. It might wear off over time, but once you can kind of get over that and all of the flaws that come about because of its design, you're left with a vehicle and it functions as a vehicle. And it's even a pretty decent pickup truck in terms of having a six foot bed, tonneau cover that can cover things and some other truck features. And you know, it's a technological achievement for Tesla with some of the innovations from the steer by wire to the unique structure and everything going on here. So for more information on the Tesla Cybertruck, as well as other electric pickup trucks and cars, head to CR.org.